All right. Welcome back, everybody. So if you made it this far, kudos to you. You have been through a lot, a lot of videos, a lot of time. Hopefully you learned a lot of cool stuff and why why Unity is a cool way to make apps. Um, we, we, there's so many things we didn't cover, uh, but at least I feel like you would have a really good um, uh, foot in the door you know, starting to make apps with the unity. And then this will open up for you to be able to do other cool things like doing some augmented reality apps. You know, once you can get the buttons down and panels and be able to move and get functionality, your app, like a traditional app, then you can, you know, start looking at some cool stuff. You know, unity has got things built in like Vuforia, Uh, and you can also use AR kit, uh, with an, a an AR core, AR cores for Google and the AR kit is for iOS. So you could use those, and, and there are plenty of tutorials out there. I might make some later, but um, and I might put some you know links to some of the things in the description below this video. But but m maybe you've been through this thing. And you're like you know I I want to know how to push this to Android, and Android is actually a lot faster to dev with and easier because you don't have to go through Xcode or an Xcode equivalent. So they, there is an Android Studio, but you don't have to go through Android Studio. Uh, you can go right through Unity. You, you can you can run right from Unity to your phone if you have it plugged up, or you can make an APK and then download that straight to your phone or, or your um, tablet. First thing we have to do is we, we've got to change our app a little bit. First thing, we, we have to uh, export all this, uh, not export, but change our platform to Android. So we're going to go to File, we're going to Build Settings, and right here at Android, we're going to click that, and we're going to hit Switch Platform right there. And this may take a little while, but just kind of sit back and, and let it do its thing. And then uh, and then we'll move on from there. All right. So now we're at uh, Android. Uh, we can see that here. Um, and then what we we'll want to do here is go to our game and then change it from free aspect. We're going to do, let's do a 1610 portrait. All right. So that's what it looks like on that kind of screen. And this should still work just like it did in iOS. We can you know test out um, our different screens here. So you just got to make sure, guys, that you're, um, I think this got switched back or maybe we never switched it. But you want to make sure when you click on under learn to own panel on the image, you want to make sure that's stretching and that preserve aspect is not enabled. Okay. All right. So uh, now we've got this. Let's go back and check our build settings. We are an Android. Okay, cool. So uh, one thing you want to make sure if you haven't set up everything for Android yet, you'll want to go to, um, let's go to, uh, let's go to our player settings again. And you just like with iOS, you have all these places to put your icons. Okay. Um, and then you can do the same thing under the icon there and you can, I'll put a link down below, but you can go and look up right here. They give you the sizes that each icon needs to be and You have to hit override for Android. And I recommend doing that resolution and presentation. Uh, defaults are going to be portrait and, um, and it can go upside down as well. And then, um, let's see, we don't want it to, yeah. We're just going to do portrait. That, that, that's the only way we want that to be. Uh, other settings can go down. Uh, we can do the same thing we did earlier. Company, I think I did tilted wheel. And then uh, I'm going to call this uh, UGA app. And then version one, bundle, uh, bundle version code one. And then, so the minimum API level here. This is the minimum that you're going to target. There's not a lot of jelly beans on the market. And I usually, these days, I just start at Marshmallow. Okay. And then the target API level, um, I just do the uh, highest installed. And uh, we're going to leave the rest of the stuff as is. Publishing settings. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about that right now. It might ask us to do a key store password. If it does, we'll we'll deal with that. This is more for when you're publishing it. Right now, we're just trying to push it to the phone. Um, so we'll leave that as is. And XR settings is if you were doing a virtual reality, AR core, or, or Vuforia. Or if you had AR kit plugin installed, it would show up here as well. 
Um, okay, so we're, we're going to try doing everything that way. We also need to link up um, your SDKs. So I'll put a link down at the bottom where you can go uh, and download your SDK. You, you need the Android SDK, and you're also going to need the Java development kit, the JDK. Um, and so I'll, sh I'll show you where to look in Unity and to help you get those uh, put in there. So they, the website I'm going to give you, the, the, there's a whole uh, t t uh, set of instructions on how to do these, download and install. Okay, so you can follow these instructions um, and, 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 get, and get these things going. Okay, so you go to Unity. Uh, I think it's Preferences, External Tools, and then this is where you can see now I've already I've already linked up my Android SDK and my Java my JDK, but you they have download buttons here where you can download them or you can do like I did I downloaded them myself and then I can just browse my computer and get to where I have so for this I downloaded the SDK from Android it's in my library folder Android SDK and you just click that SDK folder and the same thing with the JDK okay. And again, you can download them here, and this will kind of help you. Um, this is also where you can change your um, uh, your coding environment. So you can use MonoDev that's built in or Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio. Uh, but the SDK and the JDK is definitely, you have to have those, or none of the code's going to work. It won't build. So I've already got those linked up, and I've got a link down the bottom to help show you how to link those up. So there is a, a one thing that we want to add. So with with iOS... When you want to exit the app, you can just hit the little home button at the bottom of your your um, your of your iPad or your phone, right? But with Android, it's different. We have these in Android. We have these little back buttons that are kind of at the bottom, built in on the phone. So we're at least going to program for that. And when we hit that, we're going to have we're going to have the application quit. We're going to do something really simple. First thing we need to do, uh, we don't need to pull in any UI or anything, right? Because uh, the the back button is built onto the phone itself. And if you ever use Android, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, but we do need to write code for it. So let's do this. Let's open up. We we should still have Visual Studio open, and uh, let's um, in our update function, we're just going to listen for um, for if this has ever been called. So we're going to say if input dot uh, I think get key down yeah get key down and this key is going to be a uh, key code uh, key code uh, dot escape I believe and I think it needs let's do open close bracket I think that's it um, so what, what this line of code does is if it's looking for this get key down event and it's looking if that is called the input, which is the input on, this is usually for a keyboard, but it also works for Android phones. Um, if that in the back button is mapped to this key code escape, which is escape on a keyboard, but it also maps to Android as well. So this bit of code, it basically sets if to true. So if this, what it's saying is if this button, if the escape button is, is pressed, is what it says. Um, then we are going to call the application dot uh, quit. Open close parentheses. And application dot quit will end the app. It, it, it shuts it off. And, uh, and it only works if we have it built out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit file. Save all. Go back to Unity. Make sure it's compiling. And we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these messages and everything compiled. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File, Build Settings. We made sure all the other player settings were set before. And now we have a couple of options. We can build it and it will build an APK, okay? We can hit build and run in this instance. Now we didn't do the iOS because it doesn't really work for iOS. But for Android, we hit build and run. It's going to build it. And if you have an Android device plugged into your computer and you, and you have developer options turned on on your Android device, it is going to um, 
it's going to build right to your device. Okay. So that's one thing you want to make sure that you have the, the developer options turned on your device. And I'm trying to find a device here at the office uh, that I'm at to see if uh, one, because most of these have already had that turned on, but there be, should be a link in the description of the video and I'll put a link there to, to, to show you how you can turn that on. So, um, first thing we're going to do while, while I'm waiting, I'm, I'm booting up a tablet here. <coughs> Excuse me. While I'm waiting, we can go ahead and hit build and we can build, uh, build this version out. So we can hit build. We're going to save this as UGA underscore app in the UGA underscore app folder. We're going to save. It's checking my SDK platforms. And if your SDK is bad, this is where you're usually going to get an error. And you just need to make sure that you have your SDK folder linked up properly. Okay. And your external, um, external tools. So to show you, this is an older tablet here, but it's pretty much the same on most Android devices. If you can get to your settings menu, okay, and if you can um, go to about tablet, and then we're going to you need no, you're already a developer. So what happens is you can go to the build number here. And if you click it a bunch of times, it will unlock it so you can be a developer. And that will that will let your device be a developer. I've already done it, but that's where you go to do it. And it's on all Android devices. Okay. Let me get my tablet plugged in here. And if you're on, uh, if you're on a Mac, you're probably going to want to download uh, an Android uh, file transfer app. Um, I will put that in a link down in the description below. But if you download that, then when you plug in your your tablet, you'll be able to uh, get things. Honestly, I don't think I have it on this computer anymore. So I might go ahead and show you how to uh, install that and how that works. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I don't have it on this computer anymore. So let me um, let me show you how to do that. So we're going to go to Google. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Android file transfer. Uh, yeah, and we're going to download now. I'm going to open it. Uh, so you have to uh, make sure that when you do that, uh, we hit OK. Uh, one of the things you want to make sure when you plug in your Android device and it gives you that message that file transfer gives you that that message there. Let me show you on the screen here. So I've already plugged in the device. Uh, I've plugged in this to you can see I plugged it into my computer right there. And what you want to do on Android is you want to swipe down and you'll see this. It says USB uh, for charging. You're going to click that and you want to do make sure it's file transfer and we can pull it down. So now it says USB for file transfer. And when you do that, um, here, once you do that, Android file transfer will, will, should open again. And so now it has everything that's on your Android device. And that's good. You know that it's connected. And that's what you want. So now let's go back to Unity. We're going to hit the uh, build and run option. Save as UGA app. We're going to save. It's detecting uh, current SDK. It's checking everything. And over here on our app, it says you want to allow it. Yes. Always allow from this computer. And then we're going to hit OK. And now it's going to start checking. It checked the sources, it's packaging, and it's going to start. And as soon as it's done over here building, it's going to start, it should start running on our Android app. It's building the Gradle project. Now it's deploying the player. And 
and I think it should be running. There we go. We got the splash symbol. And there we go, guys. It was that easy. Um, it's so much faster to test and iterate for Android than it is iOS because you don't have to go through Xcode. Um, now let's just make sure everything works. We got, there we go. We got our sliding menu. Uh, will it take us to, it's taking us to the URL? Okay, I'm offline, but you can see it took to the URL, but this tablet's not connected to the internet. Uh, let's go back. Uh, let's see, does that pull up? There we go, it pulled that up. Can we go back to the event? There you go, guys. So as you can see, we have the same thing we had on iOS. Oh, and the back button. Remember we have the back button at the bottom? It pulls up. Uh-oh, hang on. Let's go back to our app. So we have the back button here. Well, something we didn't account for is that the back button, there we go, it worked. It, it, it exited the program. The back button was in the same part as that big button, so it kept, <laughs> kept going. But it, you saw that that code actually fired and it worked and it, and it exited, right? Um, so there you go, guys. Now you know how to, uh, how to build for Android. Um, so yeah. So anyway, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorials. Um, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any comments or any suggestions or any changes, please leave a comment for me on the YouTube page or, or send me an email from the email address you can find on the on the WordPress site there, or the webpage. And I really appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you got uh, get a lot out of this, and I hope you keep going and exploring app building with Unity, and maybe start making some games too. Why not? It is a game engine after all. Um, but uh, I, I think you'll be quite surprised what, how you, what you can get done with the little bit that you've learned from these tutorials. All right, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a, a pleasure, and I hope to see you in some of my other videos on my website. Uh, or to hear, uh, you know, throw me a line every once in a while. Let me know how everything's going. As always, if you have any questions, you can comment or send me an email. And I will see you guys sometime in the future. Thank you so much. Bye.